Welcome to This Week in Guns. This show offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matthew LaRosier, and I'm here with my co-host, Sean Heron. Sean, how's it going? It's good, man. It's good. We're a little bit late this week, uh, yeah. and that's all your fault. I'm going to give you full blame for this. Okay, it is my fault. So uh, we're actually... Uh, well, we're getting into manufacturing more stuff. I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but it's kind of hard to get things in our industry right now. So we decided to bite the bullet and we bought a, a full CNC package, a lathe and a mill. Uh, yeah, no, really, really cool pieces of equipment. And I was very specific with the shippers because our, you know, warehouse does not have a forklift. We've got, you know, it's, it's not that big. Uh, so I was very specific. These are very like heavy pieces of iron. You're going to need a forklift, right. To, to load them, to unload them. They're like, Oh yeah. Okay. No problem. No problem. So the, being instruction instructed to send a guy with a forklift, what they sent was a guy with a Harbor freight pallet jack. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so yeah, when I thought I was going to be done unloading at like 3 PM, I was uh, spending the, my time going to other warehouses, begging to borrow a forklift. And, uh, I yeah. can't believe someone let you borrow a forklift. Right? It was a really nice lady who, uh, who is like, uh, you know, I said, hey, can I borrow a forklift operator? Because, you know, people don't want to just let you borrow their pieces of equipment like that. Yeah. yeah. She goes, it's just me, dude. Uh, I don't have anyone. And I go, well, can I like borrow it? And she goes, well, do you, do you know how to, how to drive it? I said, yeah, of course. And of course, I've never driven a forklift before in my entire life. <laughs> uh, but I have a tractor, and so I was like, I'll just pretend it's a tractor, and it worked out. So yeah, I, I oh, and by the oh, and, and the forklift didn't start, so I had to pull out my mechanic hat, get the forklift running, and, and then come and unload it myself. So I was done like super late in the night. We had all this stuff hooked up, and that's that's why I uh, failed you guys in a in a fundamental way. And I'm oh going. man, that's awesome though. Like I I think of all the things to to be doing. That, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, you you uh, fraudulently borrowed a forklift. You had the mechanic <laughs> skills uh, that we talked about uh, in the first episode with you, and and you got it all off of off of the truck without Safely. yeah without yeah. dying from using Harbor Freight tools. Right. No, it was. I mean, putting it was okay to put the three thousand pound lathe on the the loading jack that was rated for exactly 3000 pounds. <laughs> but when we were looking at using that to move the mill, which is like 4,000 pounds, I was like, I'm going to need to go and find something <laughs> to yeah. make this work. <laughs> but, but you know, I'm really excited. And so now like, um, like how I had to learn to use a, uh, a forklift on the spot, uh, I'm going to have to learn to use a CNC machine because I also have no idea what the hell I'm doing that that may be a little bit more challenging it it is you know i've got experience like you know i've run manual machines for a long time but uh and the guy the guy i bought it from gave us these books which are more like they, they look like tomes oh, uh true. and so yeah that'll be it'll be some time so if any of you have uh tips on cnc machining you gonna you go ahead and let me know that's absolutely <laughs> and I, I know that there's tons of people who listen to podcasts that, that do that stuff yeah and run the machines all day um, yeah sure yeah useful people unlike you know lawyers oh boy <laughs> <laughs> speaking of useless people what's the first story all right so let's talk about texas uh, a state we usually think pretty pretty good about in terms of our our world right yeah without question like uh, the, the stars at night are big and bright <laughs> <laughs> yeah and everything else is bigger <laughs> well according to state representative terry Meza, texans they shouldn't have they shouldn't be able to use lethal force when they're defending their homes you know because like it's just a house right whatever you don't have your like fleshy family members in there or anything but Mesa filed hb 196 uh, in anticipation of the next legislative session and basically the purpose of this is repealing texas's castle doctrine hmm Interesting. Can you explain the difference between like castle doctrine and self-defense uh, just broadly? Like, I guess maybe I didn't know the difference. <laughs> well, actually, you're on to something because there isn't really a difference. Oh, so okay. the reason castle doctrine came to exist, all right, so we'll take a step back here. <laughs> self-defense, the in the like way it's been all the way back to the beginning of law was you're in a situation where it's reasonable to believe that you're in grave bodily danger, right? Mm -hmm. so then you can use proportional force right deadly force 
to stop that situation and it's to prevent you know it's it's a way of ensuring better outcomes what started happening over time is the courts started like just just playing with it a little you know just started you know a little twist a little tweak here and that's where you wound up getting these these questions like well did you retreat right did you exhaust all of your options to to get away and stuff like that that stuff was invented right it, it's a much more modern invention so stuff like castle doctrine so castle doctrine is basically you know where you have your home and in some states your automobile you know any uh, there's a bunch of different incantations of it but it basically says is you now if you're threatened in that situation right on that place you don't have to retreat you don't have to back down you can stand and defend yourself and that's also stand your ground also is basically just a codification of no duty to retreat it's just basically it states that passed these laws generally did it to fix the courts having gone and messed with them over the years yeah that's interesting so she very much is like talking in this article about like property you know yeah Her and it's not be met with death and I mean, I can understand that argument, but I think it's reasonably just very surface, right? Right, it is. And it's also because we have to think about back in the day, and I mean like the founding era, there was only like eight or so felonies. And those are what we call the common law felonies. Those were all things that were uniquely dangerous, uniquely like horrifying that we just cannot tolerate. One of those has always been burglary. Okay, and the other ones were, you know, things like rape, murder, arson, mayhem, which is, you know, chopping things off of people. They're not supposed to do that. Um, those were always felonies. And so the reason burglary was also a felony is that when you, so burglary is breaking and entering into a dwelling with the intent to commit some other felony therein, right? Mm -hmm. That is so dangerous just because it necessarily puts you in a confrontation with people who, who like may be sleeping oh yeah you no know, the the original definition was also at night but over time they took it out um but it, like you know it puts you in confrontation with people who are sleeping who are not expecting this type of thing and are also you know in their sacred area right this is, your home is supposed to be someplace where you're you feel safe no matter what and so that's the reason that we treat the home with such seriousness is because the stakes are so high. And that's why if you're a burglar, the stakes are so high. You know, that's why it's likely, it's likely that if you have an encounter with, you know, the inhabitant, that someone's going to get very, very hurt. Because, I mean, any reasonable person who encounters somebody breaking into their home, you're not going to assume that, you're not, what are you going to say? Oh, he's just taking the TV, you know. Yeah. You're going to immediately feel in fear for your life. So that's, that's why, you know, a lot of people are just saying, oh, no, don't, you don't use deadly force to, defect, to protect property. You know, those arguments can make sense when it's like somebody, you know, like taking your ladder, right? Or, you know, you yeah. like left your ladder outside or like, you know, even sometimes I think about that with, um, you know, a parked automobile. Um, not that I'm saying I wouldn't blast somebody for going after my truck, but, you know, that... <laughs> there, yeah. there's like nuance there right exactly exactly somebody for trying to break into your truck right. but if you then confront them and then there is something that you could reasonably articulate that you were in immediate and unavoidable danger of death or serious bodily harm like right that's, exactly that's the nuance that i think is right if somebody tries to break into your truck while you're sitting in it i think that's a pretty good you know that's a pretty good excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if they just tell me to do it. I'm not going to do it. They're going to have to like provide a weapon or something. And then mm -hmm. at that point, I absolutely can articulate that right. immediate unavoidable danger. Yeah. And, and so that's, I think that's what uh, Mesa is, is gl gl glancing over. She's glancing over the, uh, the depth of the situation. And like you were saying, the nuance it's, we're not just saying, no, I want to protect my, my shrubs and you know, whatever it's, um, no, this is like the most, uh, what's the word, like s sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. The most vulnerable yeah. that people can be. And so that's why we, we, we put the presumption on the person who's innocent in these situations. It's not, 
and I think what Maze is doing here is putting the presumption that if you're trying to defend your house from a burglar, that you're just materialistic, right? Or something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. And then there's even nuance to that too, right? Like right. Uh, in Colorado, we have no no duty to retreat or preclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you can if you can articulate jeopardy, ability, and opportunity of them to to cause that harm, that's there. But just directly from this article, um, if Mesa's bill becomes law, homeowners will be required to retreat from their homes when a criminal invades. They will be required to make sure the criminal is not hurt or face charges for defending themselves. Now, <coughs> say you uh, pull into your driveway and you see someone walking around in your house. Like in Colorado, if you introduce yourself to that situation, like walk into the house and 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 confront them, there's probably, it's going to be a little bit harder for you legally. However, if there's somebody in the house that you could reasonably articulate the danger, mm -hmm. uh, then then that makes a, a big difference and, and probably even including a pet. So like right. we're not allowed to use deadly force to defend a property, but the, you know, we also don't have that duty to retreat or preclude. Uh, it, yeah. Well, that's another interesting uh, like bog people get into in, in terms of the deadly force with animals thing. Um, it's it's a lot more nuanced than people believe. It's kind of like a, um, you know, uh, people often ask like, there's a lot of, I'm just saying there's a lot of nuance there. Mm -hmm. Like when you're attacked, people, people have, I've had a lot of people ask me, could I, you know, if, if I'm walking my dog and a, like, you know, a stray dog attacks, right, could I shoot the stray dog? And people will say, either like, because I, I don't think I can use deadly force to protect my property because the dog, you know, you'd be protecting your dog or whatever. Well, you can't use deadly force against property, right? So that's that's just one piece of nuance there, right? Um, it's destructive force, which is why if you look in the court records, whenever cops go and blast people's dogs for no reason, they're always very careful to say that the officer went in and destroyed the animal. Yeah. Um, but so like, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying like there's, and there's things on the other side too, right? Like you can buy, you know, violence to, like through violence to property, you can infer a danger to yourself as well. And, and like I'm saying, this is like a really nuanced thing that goes all over the way. I'm not saying how it would turn out in any specific situation, but that's why I just hate these hard and fast rules. The common law was designed to account for all of these situations and be able to take them all into account. When you immediately put a duty on somebody and also a duty that people aren't going to know about, right? The lay person isn't going to really understand this, um, you know, this change. You have a, you you create a lot more situations where there could be problems, and I mean, and I'm also just generally not in favor of putting the onus on the innocent party in yeah. any way to, to make sure the intruder is not harmed. Come on, man. Yeah, they, maybe it sounds like it sounds like England, right? Where they where you go go to like the guy defended himself with a screwdriver and he wound up in jail. Utterly ridiculous. Yeah. I do want to I do want to correct a mistake that I just said. In Colorado, we actually cannot. Uh, we cannot use lethal force to defend pets. Um, right. I, I, I said that in the second I said it, I was like, wait, that's wrong. So just, just to be clear. Oh, oh, there it's, you can't use it to def to defend a pet. Correct. Yeah. Right. But then that's the same question. Is it lethal force if it's against another animal? Right. So I got attacked by a pit bull <laughs> while walking my dog. Okay. Uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. No, this, I guess it was eight years ago, which is totally unimportant. Not sure why I'm, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, and had it just attacked my dog, I, I believe that I, that I wouldn't have been justified in deadly force. The second it turned its attention to me, I would have been justified in using deadly force. Right. But you can't use deadly force against a dog. So it's not, it's not in most States. It's not legally alive. So you, so it's destructive force. Huh? Okay. Because that's... you're destroying a chattel. That is very interesting. Well, I mean, I was not carrying that day. Uh, and it was actually the last day that I didn't carry, uh, of my entire life <coughs> because I got it. Me and my little Corgi got attacked when I was in Georgia Dang. and man, I, I didn't wind up hurting anything. Thank God. I, I just managed, I, I kicked the dog and attacked it, her and, and he ran off. But I literally had just been coming off of a road trip and I was carrying. I had a I had a 455 Webley in my waistband. <laughs> <laughs> a Webley Mark 6 cuz I had just sold 
I had just sold my carry gun and I was like, well, I'm not going to travel without a gun. What do I have? And right. I had a Webley. So I had a loaded Webley <laughs> with me. Yeah. And so, and, and so the dog came and bit my dog and I just went, ah, I kicked it and, uh, and it ran off. And then I was like, oh, and I picked up my dog and then my, and my gun starts to fall down. So I'm like, you know, holding it up. Yeah. And because I wasn't like walking, I was just like, you know, in the parking lot here. Mm -hmm. And so then the owner of the dog who attacked my dog came out. And this must have been just like the strangest sight in the world, uh, where there's just a, a bearded man holding a corgi, shouting, and there's like a Webley in his waistband just going, You keep your damn dog on a leash. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I can't imagine how that dude felt, but he did, he was very apologetic. I was irate. I think my eyes were red. Just imagine that. I'm there with... Like, she's right here. Uh, the Webley. Here, like this. With the Webley in my waistband. Just shouting. Uh, run, up, run up doth get done up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty classic but yeah this this is a very dumb thing for this person to introduce yeah. in my opinion like I, I i i don't agree exactly like you said i don't agree with making the innocent party uh putting mm -hmm. this on them yeah look if you're innocent you should be innocent that should be the end of the story right anything that you have to do to get yourself out of a situation that a felon and using the common law term of felon right that a felon put you in should be their problem yeah totally agree but again you know, just one of these politicians that hears these words and she's like, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. They, it really doesn't. Uh, yeah. Uh, this, it's a, it's just a, like, you know, uh, this, you know, there's a certain side of the political spectrum that has a general uh, disfavorment of the concept of private property. And so they'll wind up doing this stuff like that. Yeah. It, it's a, like a fun, it's a pro very profound, um, a, like, state of thinking that that i can't quite understand and I, mm -hmm. I've, I know people who are like that that are like well I, I, my life is not important more important than anyone else's right i would never use a, a gun to defend myself if they kill me they kill me and that's just the way it was meant to be and like i cannot uh i can't even reasonably understand that at all like it makes no sense to me it's they might as well just be speaking a language that i've never yeah heard. i mean if you know if i feel like and, you know, and people always ask me, people will ask me, well, like legally this, legally that and stuff like that. And I, you know what I want to say? I can't say this. Like once when they've contracted with me and they're my client, I have to like give proper legal advice. Yeah. But what I so badly want to say is, brother, at the end of the day, <laughs> you're going to be judged or carried by some other people. Yeah. So, you know, it, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters, right? If you feel like you're in danger, you're going to do what you're going to do. And this like no matter how you shift the goalposts with these stupid laws it's it's not going to change that and, I, and it, all it's going to do is punish people who are put in very bad situations and who act in a reasonable way yeah totally. now that said if you act unreasonably right like you're not supposed to execute people and crap like that like, right. <laughs> yeah, like even with castle doctrine and stand your ground if like somebody goes down and puts their hand up you don't get to go and just like waste them true and I, and yeah there was that case of the guy who uh, had people breaking into his house. So he basically sat in his basement in the dark. And when they broke in, he, he uh, executed them. Yeah. Like not supposed to do that. No, and he, he went to jail for a very long time because yeah. of it. So. Yeah. It's, it's not like they say in the memes, right? Where it's like, the, the day has come. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, man. Uh, yeah. Joking about burglary. But anyway, uh, let's joke about Florida instead. Let's do it. Uh, all right. So. Uh, uh, another state that is supposed to be mega gun friendly and is also my home country and is also shaped like a gun. It, it we've is. Got, <laughs> we've got a uh, state representative, Dan Daly of Coral Springs. Hate Coral Springs. He has again submitted a bill that would require background checks for purchases of ammunition. Um, and what he's saying is. This proposal would apply to all sales of ammunition if it becomes law and would close what gun control advocates refer to as, wait for it, the ammunition loophole. Oh boy. Ammunition loophole. Everything's a loophole. If you can buy something, it's, I, I used the gas loophole to fill up my truck yesterday. <laughs> so true. You know, just that assault gas. Yeah. <laughs> oh um, my God. 
yeah, I mean, the idea is, and they keep saying this won't affect your rights, right? Because you, you know, you just fill out a background, you blah blah blah. Of course, it affects your rights. Everything that puts a onus and a burden on what you do, right? Everything that puts a hurdle in your way, you, it, even if you think it's reasonable, right? Which I'm sure he does. How can I don't understand how you can sit there with a straight face and say it doesn't affect your right? It sure as heck affects your right. It, it does. And without question, and this is so dumb. This is so funny that this story came up. So little known fact about me is I love the TV show, the West wing. Like mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite bits of like television that has ever existed. And I usually watch it every couple of years and I've been watching it because I wanted, you know, the political process has me a little bit disenchanted. And, and even though I really disagree with the politics on the show, the West wing, like I really just enjoy um, that view of government, people that care, people that, uh, you know, the, the lives that they give and the sacrifices they make to govern. The, in season seven, the last, the last season, one of the, one of the democratic uh, candidates for president, he is, they're doing a debate, the presidential debate, and he talks about ammunition background checks. And it's not about gun control because, you know, guns are the second amendment and everything. And this is, this is back in 2004. Mm -hmm. And so this is this has been around for so long, and they just keep like bringing it back up, bringing it back up. And it was just crazy to like hear that and think, wow, that, that uh, you know, I thought it had been kind of a, a little bit of a newer idea, but this is a very long time ago, and they're still talking about ammunition, background checks, and uh, paperwork, and all that stuff. So it, it's stupid. It's stupid. And I mean, we have Supreme Court cases that basically talk about anything that that contradicts it right. uh, is not allowed. Yep. I mean. They're look, they're grasping at straws. They're they're obsessed with you know what they're obsessed with? T taking guns away. No, things like this. Oh yes. Yes. Because guess what? Cats out of the bag. Anyone can make it. Yeah, anyone can 3D print uh, anything now. Anyone yep. can make, make it in their garage, 3D print it, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they know that that's that they can't stop that right they know they can make it illegal right like they have in a bunch of states already but they know they can't stop it so they're thinking well what can we do and so just like you know any uh you know evil military dictator they're like well we'll cut off their supplies uh so like that's that's what they're doing it's it's just grasping and like i'm sure every single person who like i'm sure Mr. Daly thinks that he's like an absolute mastermind right he's like well we got all these 80 percent well Heck, yeah take the ammo <laughs> what's reloading yeah <laughs> <laughs> or that surface what, what is that you can't make a bullet <laughs> you can, literally you can melt it down and make it in your garage and then mm -hmm. push it into a case and you're just fine it's yeah. it, i don't know <laughs> There's even guys that invite, you know, I'm really deep in with the, um, you know, the, the defense um, or the deterrence dispense guys. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, this is, this is a community of people all over the world that are engineers and just like really hardcore dudes. They've already got all this crap covered. They have made from household chemicals, repeatable. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Yes. Um, don't worry, Alex, you're safe uh repeatable she, she didn't like that i brought up the story yeah she's <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah no you were safe everyone was safe no one got hurt because i'm not a cop i didn't have to you know i don't shoot dogs right uh <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no repeatable consistent gunpowder smokeless um and priming compounds you can make they got it to where you can reuse primers so when are we just going to just deal with it? You know, it's over. It's over. The thing is, is they they talk about in, in this article, um, in Florida, you can't legally own or have a firearm if you've been convicted of a felony. Right. Comma. If you're under a domestic violence restraining order, comma, or if you're deemed a violent career criminal, you also can't legally own and have a firearm if you're a subject of an extreme risk protection order. So let's take away the ammunition. So let's make ammunition have the same the same hurdles that that buying a gun is. Like if they bought the if they got the gun illegally, what why would they not be able to get the ammo illegally? I hate stuff like this because it just doesn't make any dang sense. And yep. it's gonna have like you know sometimes like look, 
a a total ban on guns, right, or a total ban on semi-automatics or something, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that would probably have an effect on gun crime, right? If you're if that's what your obsession is, is gun crime, right? Yes. Doing something like this, though, I don't see. I don't see it as doing a damn thing. Just because there's so many millions of rounds out there, and like the guys who go out there and commit crimes, they're not like shooters. You know, they don't train generally. There's some exceptions, but so they only need a few rounds. What do you think you're really going to stop? Well, all you're going to do is increase the price of ammunition for people who are going to get it illicitly. Mm -hmm. And so then, then guess what? If we go like uh, they have over, you know, some places in Europe where all of the casings have like a serial number on it. Guess what you just did? All yeah. you did is increase the price of old ammunition. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's not going to do anything, but what it will do. So, you know, you're going to have this much impact right on what you're trying to get. But then everyone who has to buy any ammo at all gets a like 30 minute, you know, inconvenience every time they do it. Mm -hmm. So you multiply that by like, you know, 4 billion, you know, or whatever yeah. times a year people buy ammo and there's your cost. Right. And so you have to like, look at that and say, does this justify, you know, does the cost justify the probable gain? And I, so I'd feel like they either never thought about it that way, or they literally just think of gun owners as just like subhuman animals. And it's just like, oh, well, they're tiny. It doesn't matter. You know, I think it's a little bit more of uh, of option number two there. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're sitting around thinking about this. There's people at a table. Maybe they just live in an echo chamber where like common sense is never brought up or, or applied to any, any kind of topic. But I mean, the criminal gets a gun illegally commits murder illegally like what uh, are they like um from austin powers where you have to tell him to do something three times like <laughs> he won't break that third law but he'll break every law up to that point like it just yeah it does, like it doesn't add anything <laughs> it's in the opportunity to add on charges because they yeah i've broken an amulet ammunition law and throw the person in jail forever if they didn't actually just kill themselves after committing the crime I mean, some of the purpose of it could be to damage the um, the businesses in Florida because we have a lot of businesses in Florida selling ammunition online. Yeah. It could be to, I mean, like that could be the real reason. And I think it would be pretty good at that. I think it would be pretty good at driving all those companies out of the state. I mean, if, you know, passing a $15 an hour minimum wage wasn't good enough. Right. That's <laughs> for getting all the businesses out. Um, yeah, I don't know. So dumb, man. I, 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 it, Stuff like this makes me think like, these are not dumb people, right? Generally, they're not going to be dumb people. They're either going to be good at something. They're going to be charismatic. They're going to, you know, be able to think things through, go to college, pass college and do those things. Right. It's not about ammunition. It, it is about infringement. It's about taking it away because this is the thing that they want to hang their hat on for the rest of their lives. It's the thing that scares them. So they have to take it away from everybody else, even when other people don't misuse it. Yeah. They're a gun these people and this is why it's important because these people they can a lot of them can be reasoned with most of them have just never had a good experience with a firearm so you can show them a good experience you could really affect the way they think but the way they think right now is literally that like they and this is why you know what word i'm guessing you hear this all the time social health right or um yeah, what is it is, is it social health uh, I don't know. I don't public know. health, public oh, health. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That gun control is a public health problem. How many times have you heard that? Many, many, many. Public health is the study of like noxious things like diseases. It's like the whole field of public health started by like isolating, um, you know, instances of early, early, like plague instances, you know? Right. So when they talk about guns in a public health perspective, that tells you that they do not like public health is not for studying things that have positive attributes, right? Nobody wants cholera. That's why public health studies how to like limit the spread of it. So it tells you that these people view guns as a social contagion itself that has no positive benefit. And so it's just, you, you know, until you can, unearth that right and you, you can actually if you can actually have a conversation and say so you literally think there's no benefit well what about x y and you know the other thing 
But until you do that, you can't have a conversation with them because you have to understand if I'm like a salesman and I'm trying to sell you a vial of cholera, you know, you're going to be like, ah, yeah, <laughs> get, no. get, a, get away from me. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense, man. Uh, social contagion. Very, yeah. very interesting. It's a public health problem. <laughs> Which we are. Ah, we are. Ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm getting so uh, triggered right now. Yeah, look. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, oh, God, Alex. Alex is triggered. Yeah. Alex, are you doggered? <laughs> um, but all right. All right. That's, that's a good way to, to go into the next thing then. Um, we got an interesting uh, uh, team change. Uh, looks like uh, Ermaya Fanayan, a uh, student in Salt Lake City, Utah, decided to switch teams halfway through the match. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, she she has just reopened the Salt Lake chapter of the Pink Pistols, which is a pro gun, pro LGBTQ group. Uh, she's now twenty, but when she was seventeen, she actually co-founded the Utah chapter of March for Our Lives. Very right, which is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, that that is uh, that is quite the profound change. Yep, uh, and you know, education. Uh, my guess is she she shotguns and she was like, oh wait. Well, she's actually got some interesting points that she makes here, which I think are, you know, a pretty good way to get people who, you know, might not be right of center to like kind of understand the importance of guns. And so what she's, well, there's a quote here, the left's idea of a gun nut typically is white men who are upper class and see this as a hobby that will make their egos bigger. But the reality is, uh, it's a form of empowerment for me. As far as legislatively trying to do things such as ban assault weapons or ultimately make it harder for regular everyday folks to access guns, only so rich elitist people can access them, I'm completely against those initiatives. Yeah. Uh, that, That's pretty woke. It, it is. It's profound. Yeah. Uh, another quote, as working class people, we should not be disarmed. Like, yes. Thank you. She's been reading her book. Yeah. <laughs> the little red one. <laughs> that is Under awesome. no circumstances should they be disarmed. Uh, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I, but and you know but she's right because think about think about what so like the the most effective in terms of getting guns restricted form of gun control we've had in the u.s is how we treated machine guns mm -hmm. are machine guns gone no no i have some Another, yeah they're right here yeah but does the average person think they can buy one no, 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 not even just the average person. The average gun owner doesn't think they can buy one. They think they're banned one. Yep. They've been able to make it so hard to get and so infuriatingly annoying that like, you know, and these are like the cheapest machine guns you can buy. And I saved for months and months and months to buy them. So it's like she's saying that's what they did with machine guns. They made them like an M16 and MP5, you know, the ones that you actually would like want to have for practical reasons are tools of rich white people to play with mm -hmm. and that's it and so like i think i think that's an important thing to to talk about and think about where it's like yeah biden wants to or you know whoever is putting this in his ear wants to put basically treat semi-automatics the same way they treated machine guns well that's exactly what she's saying the end result is going to be that semi-automatics are going to be toys for rich people to just play with and it's not going to be something that you know, the most effective tools you can have to defend yourself are going to become toys for privileged people. And that's something that no, you know, if you're, a, if you call yourself a leftist, which I don't, but, uh, so I don't know if I have any authority to speak on this, but if you call yourself a leftist, you should probably not be okay with the idea of an effective means of defending yourself, which by the way, the people most likely to be violently victimized are poor and minority people. So yeah. should the only effective way, pretty much the only effective way, like, you know, most effective to protect yourself from that be toys for uh, the man? Yeah, probably not. I'm I'm very sensitive to any law that I consider like a Jim Crow style law yeah. that, that takes away the ability for people that are poor, uh, people that are, um, I don't know, like, I don't uh, privileged, like people who uh, live in bad neighborhoods, things like that. I want those people to have guns. Yeah. I want them to have more guns. I want them to have all the ammo. Oh like, my! That's my um. Like one of my life goals that I I won't be I won't be happy unless I do this is to design a self-loading pistol that takes Glock magazines 
that can be delivered to the end user for a hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, like that's, and it's something I'm actively working on, but it's because I think all of this stuff is crap. I think like, you know, you shouldn't have to save up to get a gun. And in some, you know, like, you know, a, a one that just works, right. Mm -hmm. Um, you should have to save up to get like a, a nice luxury gun, yeah. but in these states where they charge you like in New Jersey or whatever, where you got to pay for each permit to acquire a gun and it costs, not only does it just cost you like, you know, a couple hundred bucks or something for the thing, but you got to take a day off work to go to the bureau and, and, you know, have them like look into your nose hair or whatever. Yeah. That is purely anti-working class. That is purely people who can't go to a government office Monday to Friday. Right. And guess who's not open on the weekends to the government. Yeah. It, it's, purely anti-proletariat and if you are a leftist you need to be the most hardcore pro-gun person out there uh according One, to me 100 agree and like it's a <laughs> high points uh you know the the gun community roundly uh craps on high points and i think that's utterly ridiculous like it, it is a thing and that is that that is a thing that fills a need for a certain group of our society and they work they do. So we, I was uh, instructing uh, a force on force class okay. and we were doing it for a group of educators. And one of the, one of the educators brought a high point and one of the other instructors came up to me and was like, By educators, you mean like school educators? Yes. Yes. Okay. Got it. Administrators, teachers, things like yeah. that. <laughs> he came up to me, uh, one of the other instructors and said, we need to get him an, a, another gun, like let him shoot one of our guns. And I just looked him dead in the eye. I was like, what? No, like that's the gun he has. That's the gun that he can yeah. afford. I have nine high points, maybe more. I don't, I don't even know how many I have at this point. Um, and I I feel fully uh, confident in their ability to work. Like if you have there, yes, there's some lemons out there, but generally they work. I'm like, if that's the gun he has, let him use that gun over the next couple of days. We'll talk to him and uh, you know, like let him shoot a couple different guns right. so that maybe in the, in the future, Just give him exposure. Yeah. Expose him to them. So he can be like, Oh, you know what? I really like this one instead. And then uh, let, let him make his own decisions. Like right. do not under any circumstances, make him feel bad about having that gun. Yeah. Like, that's the one he could afford. That's the one he bought. That's the one he's got. Let's, let's let him roll with it. And also guess who's not going to be, want to be a part of the gun community. If you make them feel like crap for getting an entry level firearm. Yep. Absolutely. My landlord here in the, in my office building, he uh, brought in uh, a gun for me to look at cause it wasn't working and it was a Yemenez. Okay. And uh, it had uh, a barrel obstruction. There was a bullet stuck in the barrel. So oh, no. uh, we talked about it. We talked about the good, the bad. Uh, and, and he is, he has since upgraded, but I never shit on it. I, or, uh, let's see. That was a 3754. <laughs> I never uh, made him feel bad about having it. Uh, I understand why he has it, why he carries it. He he manages a lot of different buildings in a lot of different parts of town. Yeah. And just by talking to him and letting him check out a couple of my guns, uh, just showing him the differences and, and what I see is the pros and cons of each. Like he, he was able to, to then make a better decision and not once did he ever feel bad about having the thing that he had to protect his life. Like that's why he owned it. Exactly. And also, I mean, just to be frank, I love cheap, crappy guns. Yes. I, I love them. I totally agree. <laughs> I've got two. I've got two high points. Uh, both of them are three D printed. Um, you know, the with the control pews. Uh, oh yeah. Parts. Get, but and then they recently released because th there was the low point, which was the nine and three eighty frame, and yep. then they just released the big point, which is uh, the forty and forty five frame. And so I just printed out a big point. I haven't done the big point. I printed out a low Dude, point. It's huge. Uh, the forty five cool. ones are like this big. Yeah, I've got some 45s, <laughs> but I haven't printed one out yet. Oh, uh, oh, oh, you got a 45 high point? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They shoot good. They're yeah, fine. I, yeah. Like, it's like shooting an anchor. Um, you know, the most pleasant 40 I've ever shot was a high point just because of the weight. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. Uh, but so, but yeah, like there's, look, but anyway, the point is, look, I know, and trust me, I know how much fun it is to crap on people's guns. Yeah. But save it for some people who are already in, you know, people who are already in and, and you're just like playing with them because they're already, you know, like they buy a, a scar instead of something else. Right. Play with that guy. Don't play with the guy who's like dipping his toes in and, and thinking about, you know, getting into it. Yep. I 100 percent agree. I'm going to go back to this article because I think the very last uh, couple quotes, one of the other LGBTQ organizations in this state. Oh, yeah. 
uh, says, we draw a line, however, at military-grade weapons in the hand of civilians, blah, 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 blah. Fanean and Fanean, Fanean, yeah, Fanean, Fanean. Uh, on the other hand, wants to see community-based solutions to stop gun violence rather than what she calls restrictive gun control. She says, and I quote, as far as directly or legislatively trying to do things such as ban assault weapons or ultimately make it harder for regular everyday folks to access guns, only so rich elitist people can access them. I'm completely against those initiatives. And this is the kind of, this is the story that I love most. Like someone who has a belief, like I was very, I was very liberal in my youth. And the older I got, the more I realized that, you know, uh, that I was probably thinking incorrectly for me in my life. And uh, I, I switched up and here I am today. Yeah. So I, I mean, it. yeah, I've been, I've been all over the place as well. Uh, they always said, uh, they, my mom used to always say, you'll be liberal while you learn and conservative when you earn. Uh, that, yes. <laughs> I never quite got, I never quite got to the conservative tag. I'm um, still pretty libertarian in most things, but I do definitely get what she meant. Paying taxes for the first time was a a shock. <laughs> no <laughs> I was doubt. like, "What do you mean? <laughs> How dare that's, you? That's a big cut." <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, we got another Florida story. Uh oh. All right. So, and man, oh man, this is oh, in I Fort saw. Lauderdale, yeah. where I where I had like one of my first jobs. I used to call it Fort Slaughterdale. Oh boy. So we're gonna we're gonna hear there's like there's a lot of weird crap that'll happen to you, man, off of Davy down there. I've, there's I, like I can only imagine. I have never seen like homeless people more aggressive than than in Fort Lauderdale. Really? Uh, yeah, like you know, and I li I lived in DC and they would like maybe aggressive and ask you for stuff, but like in Fort Lauderdale, they like walk straight up to you and get right here. You know, and be like, "Hey, man." Uh, yeah, it was like it's like who who falls for that? Anyway, yeah, a Fort Lauderdale man, seventy years old, Bill Narcunas. He had somebody trying to beat his door down, right? Trying to smash in his window. So, Bill gets his his blaster and calls the cops, and is like, "Hey, somebody's trying to beat down my door, or whatever." And so he's standing there, like in in the like, you know, ahead of the door, right? Watching this guy beating on it like senseless. And he's just got his gun in his hand, you know, because he's thinking if he gets through, he's gonna kill me. Mm -hmm. So the dude, the the seven year old man stands there holding his gun, trembling on crutches. All right. And you know, for 15 minutes. Jeez. You know where the cops were? Nope. They were chilling 500 yards down the road what like a dozen of them yeah uh, because they didn't want to go in or they just i don't know but apparently they just waited there until eventually uh and yeah and, and then also all of Norkunis neighbors are calling saying hey oh my god do something right and yeah. they're like we're canvassing the area is what they said wow. so he's he's begging he's like just come here and stop this guy jesus you know he's begging and begging and begging and they're just chilling there and then eventually the guy who was beating down the door just like walks over to the cops and surrenders to them. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. That's, that's so yeah. Insane. So the guy, uh, Narcuna says, bottom line, my life could have ended that night or the attacker's life could have ended uh, based. Uh, well, yep. more than a dozen well-armed deputies did not respond to my house. That That is, a, uh, I, I did notice that this is Broward County and not Broward County. County. Yeah. <laughs> Not to paint the the Broward County Sheriff's Department with a broad brush, but let's not forget, bro. It's been look, man. I've been, I was born in Broward County. It's been consistent. Yeah. <laughs> like this is a uh, it's a systemic issue down there. Uh, the 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 corruption and everything has been going on for a long time. And you know, there's a lot of great guys. You know, I know some guys who are Broward County deputies, really cool dudes. Yep. But you know, the the general culture is not where it should be uh they they very much buy into that we don't have a duty to protect you thing uh so and this is the type of situation right like i was visiting i visited my sister for thanksgiving and i showed her my life card i was like hey this might be something for you i don't know if you know what the life card is it's this little yep thing it's fantastic by the way <laughs> they're funny yeah Whoop! it's a gun uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and she was like I don't need something like that. And I was like, okay, but you know, she goes, I have five kids. I go, yeah, 
you have five kids. <laughs> she goes, that's what the cameras are for. What? Yeah, so I'm like, no, yeah, that's... so when the guy's beating your door with a crowbar, are the cameras going to step off the wall and like grab him? Yeah, like, cam- cameras aren't there to protect you. They're there to help the cops solve your murder. Yeah, and like that's, that people don't get it, man. They don't get it. Uh, that you have to see stuff like this if you think you know you can even think oh i'm right next to the sheriff's substation i don't need a gun you know i can call him i know you know my uncle randy he's a cop oh uh, he's you know blah, blah blah crap like this it can happen so it's just a little insurance is all it is it's just a little insurance a dispatcher hears the glass breaking and alerts the 18 deputies who had been assigned to go to norcunas's norcunas home according to a dispatcher's log that documents the call and response Wow. And yet they still didn't show up. No, they never showed up. Oh my God. That sucks. That's, so, that's why, especially I can't... they're on the phone. They know that the guy just had a, a hammer. Like really? Yeah. It's uh, absolutely uh, remarkable. I, I, it's, it's hard to even fathom. I will say I had to call a noise complaint in the other day. They never, oh, yeah. sh- they never showed up. Oh really? Yeah. And for me to call in a noise complaint, it has. Well, yeah, no, it must have been like, was that some like hardcore drum and bass or something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some house DMB. Oh, nice. Uh, I uh, I got a noise complaint on me the other day. No kidding. Yeah, I was shooting on my, I have, so I have eight acres in Orlando. Okay, cool. And everyone there shoots. Everyone. Everyone was shooting. And it was like, you know, boom, 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 everywhere. And I had never had a run in with the, the local cops there once I, you know, from when I had had gotten that land and so the moment i shoot like right after i shoot my 607 my 10 inch ar though which is <laughs> hideously loud yes uh the cops were there five minutes later and i was like oh my god here we go uh and you know what they said it was actually i this is probably the best interaction i've ever had with police in my life they go they come up and they go are you guys shooting out here and then we're, we don't have any guns on us on our hands or anything and then you hear in the background, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I go, well, if we are, you can tell it's not only us. And he goes, yeah. that's fair. Well, somebody called in a noise complaint, and uh, we just wanted to let you know, uh, as you know, you have a right to shoot out here, and we totally support it. Nice. And I was like, and I was like, oh, cool. Want to see my berm? And he goes, you have a berm? Like he was like, he was so, he was like, he was happy. You that, know? That's awesome. That's how it should. Like uh, you're you're doing what's what's legally your right to do. Yeah, no, and he was just like, yeah. So when people call a noise complaint, we just literally make sure you're not shooting into the air. Uh, he's like, you have an actual backstop, so that, you're good. That, he's like, we're just we're literally happy that you're not shooting directly up. <laughs> you're like, well, it's not a wedding or a funeral, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, boy. what's our last story today? Okay, fascinating one. Ohio Court of Appeals has struck down. Cincinnati's bump stock ban. Okay. Oh so, yeah, right. I saw your your head tilted like my dogs. Yeah, it did. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I've never heard these sounds before in this order. Yeah, those are different <laughs> different noises. <laughs> um. So, and this is like, I mean, and also at the end of the day, it's like, a, oh yeah, good use, right? Because the feds have already threatened the heck out of us on this. Yeah. But regardless, it's still. I like some of the language in the decision. I like the way that they're going. So. Cincinnati banned trigger activators, which included things like bump stocks and other stuff. I don't exactly understand what they think it is. I know what I think it is, but it might be a different story. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was back in April of 18, you know, during the, the bump stock times. Yeah. So now the law was unconstitutional, was is struck down as unconstitutional by the first appellate court. Uh, and on top of that, the city of Cincinnati was ordered to pay the, the prevailing party's attorney's fees which is pretty spicy, right? But so it it wasn't a Second Amendment case, though. The case was focused on Ohio's um, supremacy law, which basically says that local governments cannot restrict firearm components. So what the city was arguing is that this isn't a component, it's an accessory, Uh, which, right, that's, that's pretty contrived, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but I, I I see where they're going. Yeah, you you see like where they're going, and the uh, and the judge was like very cute. Uh, pay their attorneys fees now. <laughs> That's great. So it's like, is it a like a preemption kind of thing? It, well, it, yeah. So it is it is preempted, and so the question was, um, can the city regulate 
because the law says you can't regulate guns or their components. So the question was, but can we regulate accessories? And so then the judge used a very logical uh, definition of component, which is a component, a piece of something. Mm -hmm. And so if you use a bump stock to attach it to a firearm, it's a component is basically the the logic of the decision. So it's like not a very sexy you know, decision, but I think it's pretty logical um, and pretty refreshing, right? Because usually in a in a situation like with something as publicly despised, publicly reviled as bump stocks, you'll see yeah. judges bend over backwards to just do whatever they can. But in this situation, they they did a pretty good job. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. And it's actually it's it's pretty surprising. Um, it doesn't do anything. Um, no, but pretty cool. Uh, this is Buckeye Firearms. Um, yeah. We're one of the guys, some of the people working, a good friend of mine, uh, has been with Buckeye Firearms for a very long time. He's a criminal defense attorney out of out of Ohio. And oh, they're uh, they're cool. Yeah, yeah. He's he's definitely uh works on all this stuff. Uh I need to get him on one of the shows soon. I bet he knows uh I bet he had a lot of insight into this and probably worked on it as well. Yeah, no, it'd be fun to talk to him for sure. Definitely. So yeah, this is uh this is good. It's like one of those hooray. Yeah. Anyway, we did it Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is that is cool. So like can it be appealed from here on or is it it's like fine? Yeah, it could. It could okay. go to the state supreme court, but I mean why? Right. And I wonder like, you know, do you think that they will or do you think they just give it up at this point? I think they'll appeal the award of attorney's fees. Okay. I, I think that's about all they'll do interesting that's my gut just because like they're like oh my god ouch like that's what they're thinking right now i think yeah. they'll, they'll focus everything on that and like that probably spooked them a little bit you know so definitely but also like there's no point there's just no point i mean you know we have seen like the feds utterly fail to enforce the bump stock ban right mm -hmm. um but at the end of the day the, the point is all of the smoke and mirrors and pomp and circumstances have made it so that it you just they're hard to get so i'd say it's like a dead letter more or less very interesting well but at least if you have an illegal bump stock illegal bump stock and you're arrested in cincinnati they they won't be able to bring the city charge on you that's true but it's still federal as we found out with the suppressor sales uh in kansas right that case yeah no they'll have to uh yeah and they can charge that so craziness yep. and these are fun stories uh, i think that wraps that that does it for the stories today right yep it does all right man what final words of wisdom do you have for the people before we leave oh damn i wasn't prepared <laughs> for that I know. um you just did the sideways head tilt. Print, like, oh. yeah print guns not money and buy a reloading press for real I, I, could, I couldn't say it better myself. Go check out all the all the podcasts on the Firearms Radio Network, firearmsradio.tv. That's where you can subscribe to this. Let us know what you think of the show, whether it's on comments on YouTube, comments on the, on the firearmsradio.tv site, or just wherever you listen to your podcasts. Uh, Matt, I will, I will see, you, see you next time, buddy. Yep. And also, thank you guys. Also, I just released another video on my YouTube channel, Fudbusters, on interstate transfers. If you want to see some myths busted on that, I'd love it if you checked it out. Heck yeah. And we'll have that link in the show notes as well. We'll see you next time.